Before he'd go, he insisted on returning to the main seal and to the monitor banks back beside it. The techs on duty before the screens assured him no trace of ant activity had surfaced. Further, there was no indication that any would appear. Felix nodded, allowed Schoen to lead him to the fate. In truth, he hadn't expected trouble. He would have been greatly surprised had there been any. But that wasn't why he had gone to the monitors. He'd gone to the monitors to warn himself. Banshee. Ants. Death. Still. Don't forget it, he thought to himself. He sighed. Was he being foolish? Was he... What the hell was he? He tossed the thoughts aside with another sigh and hurried to keep up with Schoen, anxious to rejoin her friends and the glowing novelty of this, their very first, really and truly, official ant war camp out. The party was indeed festive and most illegal, and therefore a great success. It was held in a sealed-off section of the second floor, an area housing most of the liaison observers and other fleet names. Technically, it was for the press only. In reality, it was for Kent. It was a ceremony, a rite, held in his name for all. The high point of the evening, Felix soon learned, was to be a warning to Kent of his first battle ribbons. Felix loved the very idea of that. He noticed his own wide grin only when he caught himself laughing out loud at the sight of the forest of brass spread about the room, awaiting the ribbon ceremony. His mysterious recklessness had returned, he noted dimly, but it didn't seem to matter. Not here. Everyone who is anyone is here, he said, straight-faced to Schoen, only to find out that she had left him to join a gaggle of the like-minded. He shrugged and walked over to the bar and had a drink. His first since... Since when? Since that last night before. That night before. As he tasted the first sip of beer, the knowledge that he must return to duty in a mere four hours, and the horror of the chance he was taking, seemed not only distant and irrelevant, it was macabrely funny. He forgot those thoughts, too. Half an hour later, he was mildly drunk. He didn't care. He was having too much fun enjoying the crowd. The food, too. Beside the bar was a long table covered with decorative knickknacks and, more importantly, many goodies. He had, on the very first sight, officially designated the table as his all-time favorite fleet thing. He had remained within arm's length of it since that moment, sipping and munching and patting his happy tummy. Not that the chow aboard the Terra was bad, because it really wasn't. He was famous, in fact, for being the very best to be had aboard warships. Felix accepted this oft-repeated accolade without examination, though the image of gourmets making a culinary pilgrimage between warships did not come easily to him. On the other hand, he conceded, it was no sillier a use for faster than light than rending exoskeleton. Even Hamad Renault made appearances. Every half hour he would stop by just long enough to receive his due, before assuming the truly perfect expression of the great leader who, though at heart a fun-loving fellow, was nevertheless far too dedicated to allow his personal needs to come before his noble suffering neath the awesome burdens of command. Wish I could play hooky and stay, he would remark with a twinkle before leaving to return to unspecified duties. But then, almost exactly half an hour later, he would return and do and say it all again. Felix wondered what the man did in the meantime. Watch the clock, probably. It made him a bit queasy at first. Later, he enjoyed even this. But more than anything else, he loved watching Kent. He hadn't seen him since the trouble at the dorm. He had assumed this was because of Kent's embarrassment at freezing up under fire. If so, he seemed to Felix to have gotten over it. Warm and friendly to all, tall and handsome, exuding twin auras of goodwill and unintentional physical intimidation. 
He really was everything Forrest had said he was. The shyness was there, too, broadcasted by his pained efforts to conceal it. It was a genuine attempt, Felix knew, to be what everyone seemed to need him to be. The lion he resembled. Felix smiled and sipped. He knew a thing or two about lions, and Kent wasn't in it. Nowhere near arrogant enough. It was Felix's firm conviction, furthermore, that it was no loss. None at all. Gentle is better. He whispered, tilting his glass at the handsome features across a sea of admiring officers and press. Then, Kent saw him looking, and everything changed. At first, Felix thought it had been his imagination. Kent's sudden, paled expression couldn't be due to recognition, he thought. How would he know me outside my armor? It soon became apparent, however, that Kent did know him. Knew, in fact, every move he made through the crowd. Every few seconds or so, Felix would catch Kent watching him. He would always look away when their eyes met, but he would be looking again a few seconds later. Looking and drinking. He drank a hell of a lot, even, or especially, for a well-tuned athlete. Felix was becoming alarmed, and he wasn't the only one. The first time Kent staggered, the entire horde seemed to bow with the shock of the sight. Felix hated it. He wasn't equipped for it. He wasn't adequate. Not now. Not anymore. He left quietly, sliding unobtrusively out the door as the ribbon ceremony began. Schoen caught him outside in the passageway. Where are you going? She wanted to know. He said something about being on duty in two more hours and too much to drink and such. She took a step closer and rested a hand on his shoulder. Have you forgotten how to have a good time? She asked. He ignored the sinking feeling in the pit of his stomach. He smiled badly. He said he hadn't forgotten. Schoen eyed him suspiciously. Are you sure that's true? She demanded. He paused. Sure it's true, he exclaimed. He smiled again. He patted her on the shoulder. He walked away. And it was true, he said to himself as he entered the lift. He did remember. He did. He just wasn't sure that was enough. He smoked and dripped, watching himself in the mirror on the far wall. He watched without passion, numb, tired, suspended between. Somewhere out there were so many, many things. The horror of the ants, the legions of their dead strewn about on the sand, the memory of how it was done and of how it had been done in the past. The past, that was out there too, hovering between the laughter of the child warriors and their party, and visions of killing ants one by black bleeding one. Kent came in. They stared at one another in the mirror. Finally, Felix indicated a spot on the bench before him, and Kent sat there. He was holding a bottle. He offered it. Felix drank. Then he spoke. He told Kent about Forrest. He told it straight through, without pause, without emotion. His voice echoed hollowly in the empty chamber. Kent began to cry. After a while, Felix did too. But he didn't stop. He finished it. He emptied it out of himself with his voice. Then Kent hit him. No, no, he thought, as he crashed backwards over the benches to the floor. It couldn't have happened. It wasn't possible. He peered uncomprehendingly upward at Kent, his mind racing desperately for an alternative. There was none. I know what you think of me, groaned Kent, his voice rasping mercilessly. You think I killed her because I... I didn't kill her. Who cares? I loved her too, maybe. Not like, maybe, I... I, I didn't... You bastard! He screamed and slammed his foot into Felix's side. It doesn't mean I'm small! Felix cried out in pain, sharp, strident. Helpless again. He fainted. Dominguez found him and questioned. Felix told him 
too much to drink. He was fine, though. Dominguez watched his face a long time before answering. Sure, man, said Dominguez, and helped him to his feet.